There's no way on planet Earth I'm going to be able to beat the profit from last video in this video, is there? Unfortunately, most of the things still haven't sold, so I'm not going to be able to update that right this second. However, I can reconfirm exactly where we are, and that's £1,582 actual total profit without the updated things out of a possible target of 2000 Even if I can get one little fix done today, that is just going to be a step closer in the right direction to our total for this series. This series being Profit or Loss Season 2, Episode number 49. Imagine we get it done by episode 50. It's possible. Let's see if we can make a profit today. I paid a grand total of £132.79 for this faulty PS5 that seems to have the lid hanging on for dear life. There we go. That seems to be a bit better. What's wrong with it? I can hear you screaming from the other side of the screen. Well, simply put, no power, no response when you press the power or eject buttons. It does say as well that it has been opened before, which I can confirm. And what I will say is that somebody took the seal off from this way. I never, I don't think I've seen that before. Somebody taken off from that way. Most of the time it's, it's right to left. That doesn't really matter. Right. Let's make a confirmation to see that this actually Okay, well, I just um, broke my uh, broke my cable actually, which is very very interesting. Uh, that's that's <laughs> that's not meant to be in there. I'm meant to be fixing things, not breaking stuff further. Look at that! Oh man, if that's not an omen of how today is going to go, I don't know what is. At least it's not the actual port inside the keyboard. I guess the cable served me very well. Okay, what an absolute bad start to this video. Do we get? power. I didn't hear any sort of crack or anything like that. It doesn't mean anything actually. Three, two, one. Nada. Can confirm. Exactly like it says on the tin. Let's take out the power then in that case and get to the bottom of this console. But before we do that, a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you somebody who needs custom parts quick time? PCB Way makes it ridiculously easy with their instant quote tool. Just upload your Gerber files for the PCB and you are ready to go. The customization on this website is unmatched. They don't just do PCBs either. They offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding. It's all there for the taking. And if you're personally stuck for ideas on what to make or just love a good browse, check out their shared projects and and online shop packed with community builds and parts ready to order hit the link in the description and give it a try okay that's been taken care of right now let's take the housing off anything i can spot immediately inspector joey it doesn't look like it does it bad inspector joey should i say cable kind of looks okay doesn't look too beaten up has been taken out before and it looks like the uh the chassis is being completely removed sorry the heat sink itself which might indicate that the power supply has been swapped already. And you may not think it, but these little uh, investigations and inspections that you do on the board might really, really help you in the long run whilst you're trying to diagnose stuff that you've purchased from eBay specifically. And now just time to remove the other 30,000 screws that we have on the board. I do notice actually that we are missing one screw up here. Do we have any other silver ones? We're seeing one screw down here. So not 100% back together, but that's me being really picky. All right, everything seemed all right. There was a couple of screws that were like inwards, but there is a very suspect screw down here. I, I started spinning it anti-clockwise to take it out like I did with all the other screws, and it actually went down further into the board. So, I, Lord only knows what's going on with this one. And now it's just spinning. I'm not even doing anything. So I don't know what's going to happen when I try and take this board out necessarily, which I'm not going to do right this second because I'm going to test for a couple of things on the board. The first thing being voltage. Do we make, do we know if we've got our 12 volts or not? We'll start with that. Now, luckily as well, it doesn't look like we have any signs of flux on the board, which is nice. So I don't know if there's any prior repair attempts to this, even though it's been taken apart. Now I could always eat those words when I decide to take this board out and look on the other side, but I mean, so good so far. Let's go ahead and test for the 12 V's. We have 12 volts. Okay. Do we have our five? Yes. Do we have our 3.3? No 3.3. Okay. So at least we know roughly where we need to look to start. Now I'm going to take a guess right now. Okay. I've not done anything else to this board. I'm going to put this multimeter in continuity mode and I'm just going to see if they kind of diagnosed it was something like a South bridge and went, nah, do you know what? I can't be bothered to fix this. So I'm just going to check the first place on the back of the South bridge. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Okay, I don't have any shorts on that cap. No shorts on that cap specifically. Do I have my 700 ohms? I do. Okay, wait there then. In which case, 
Wait there. All right, I was wrong. Okay, that's our first hunch gone. Can I find any right there? Wow, okay. This is, I feel like I'm getting deja vu. I had one recently where I kind of like probed in the same place. I think it was this cap specifically instead. If I kind of zoom you in here without the shakes. Uh, it was it was this cap that was shorted before on a previous PS5 that I looked at maybe two or three episodes ago. And now it's it's little brother down here. See, oh, I've taken off the, uh, <laughs> the ground lead, which isn't handy. Is this one shorted? No, it's not. So yeah, it must quite literally be either this cap or something on the, back of the board is this whole rail shorted yeah it is okay so uh again voltage injection here is probably going to be our best friend wait that's not shorted but that is oh it is on a separate rail right let's get under the scope and just take a look just as an fyi that screw is literally just i don't know i don't know why that wouldn't come out but it's it's out absolutely fine now if i turn the board over so the exact location we're looking at is here which is pretty standard f7003 and we got one of the, the dialogue slash RT chips right here. Now I will caveat this and say that we could still have potentially a faulty south bridge because this is the power IC for the south bridge you see. Let's head on over to the microscope. Now I'll also be 100% honest and transparent with you. Me finding these errors has nothing to do with like my experience getting any better say in the past year or so, maybe even two years with PS5s. I'd say actually it's, it's more just luck that the eBay seller has sold me this console. Of course it is. For ages, I've been checking uh, different voltage rails of 12 volts, to 3 volts, to 5. And it's just pretty much by chance, not knowledge, that I'm most probably going to be able to fix this. Now, our short is here. So this fuse is blown. This side, we have a perfectly good working rail is what I'm going to assume because we have open line on continuity mode, which you couldn't see before. But now you can if I just show you. There we go. And this side, we have a short. OK, so this fuse has gone pop, which is exactly what these uh, fuses are meant to do not like on a nintendo switch where m92 t36 acts like the fuse so if i have a short on this side the best thing to do right now the simplest method is inject right onto this rail what could it be it could be a bad chip it could be this cap here which has gone bust it could be this cap on the back right here which has also gone bang boom see you later but we also have another shorted path here as well which is down here so it could be this cap hey yep could be that cap and then this inductor, I was saying, I didn't know why this wasn't shorted, but I couldn't really see with my eyes, but it's actually on a different path. So I'm now going to take my thermal camera and I'm going to inject 0 0.7 volts into our shorted rail. So let's see what lights up. Is it going to be this side? Or is it going to be the other side? We draw two amps worth of current and I can see it lighting up. Whereabouts is that? I can see it lighting up here on the other side of the board. Imagine if it's just the actual chip itself. That'd be interesting, hey? So let me turn it around now. And I'm going to inject on this side, just down here. And what area was it? Whoa, I think it's the chip. It's very rare that the chip goes bang for me. Very rare. Or it could be something else entirely. So let me get a little bit closer now. We should be able to see more accurately exactly what's going on. Whoa, it's a cap. It's a cap. And the cap that it is... Let me show you. Now we're getting about 40 degrees Celsius right here, so we should see it light up. You ready? Here we go. You tell me what cap it is. If you said this one right here, you'd be 100% correct. Can you see it evaporating the uh, isopropyl alcohol because it's hot? It's not very clear. If I bump this up to maybe one volt or 1.25 or even 1.5, this would be blistering hot and it, you might even see it smoke. We're not going to do that. Now, what we are going to do, because I'm fairly confident, is replace both that cap and the fuse next to it. These are the jobs that if I was to own a repair business or people out there who do repair, uh, own repair businesses are the golden nuggets. They make your business great money because they're nice and simple. After some experience working with them, we have an issue with a capacitor and a fuse. So I'm going to put that on the side for the time being. We'll come back to that. Whilst the board is hot, though, I'm going to try and move quick here. And I'll take the fuse off as well. There we go. And then I simply just come in with a donor fuse from the exact same location. Because it'll be rated for the same amps. There we go. And the same cap. Just like that. Place them down. Tiny bit of fluxation to the nation on each one. Reduce our airflow speed to around about 40% to make sure that flux doesn't go all over the board. And I'm going to use a new tool in a second. We should see these float back into place. Watch this. Watch the fuse specifically with a little T on the right. Here we go. There it goes. See? Lovely. And this one. 
There it is. Both the cap and the fuse back on their pads, respectively. Now, as per uh, Lee's recommendation from Uber Micro Repairs, I actually bought some little sponges and I'm gonna see how I get on with these. So all I'm gonna do is just apply some IPA to our wounded area and the ball's gonna be nice and hot as well. So this should work relatively good. And I'm just simply using the sponge to soak up the flux on the board. There we go, look at that and give it a little bit of a clean. Now the tweezers I'm using are like angled, you know, so I'm not scratching the board. I'd say that's done a pretty good job. Yeah, that doesn't look fluxy at all. It, it gets in like all of those complex small areas. So that's pretty good. Now back to this little cap for a second. I'm in continuity mode. So if I now measure this cap, we should have a beep because we're gonna have a clear connection oh, through the cap, which we shouldn't have by the way. Not meant to have a through connection on capacitors. Hear that? So that's a continuous path. Now I'm just seeing if I can see a little crack or something that would insinuate that this did go bang. I maybe see like a tiny crack on the bottom side there. Maybe like a hairline crack at the top. But yeah, this was our culprit by the looks of it. And now if I go back over to our circuit that we have supposedly fixed in continuity mode, do we have a continuous path on our fuse? Yep. Yeah. So this rail goes to this rail. Perfect. And then if I measure on this cap, we have no more short, but this is going to be ground. So this is going to beep. Perfect. If I turn this around to uh, the origin of where our fault was, which FYI was here, where it was located, and I went, oh, we have a short. If I measure here now, because it sh shares that same uh, rail and path, uh, not that one, sorry, this one, we don't have a short. So theoretically, that should be all that's wrong with this console, and it should turn on. If so, wow, what another nice little profit. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, because I always know what happens in these situations, as do you probably by now. But... Let's find out. Okay, moment of truth. Easy profit or not so easy? Let's find out. I've plugged in the power already. Three, two, one. Please stay on. Don't beep off. Looking good. Okay, sweet. We've got the blue light. Does it turn into a white light is the question. Let me plug in the HDMI. I'm getting confident now. Don't let me down. I'm probably most definitely going to hear the three beeps in a second. It's going to go to a white light, should turn back off, and then go to a blue light, and we should hear the three beeps, and then it'll go to a white light. So let's just wait for a second. You don't want to turn it off now. If I turn this console off now, it's repairing the, the storage database. So it might even potentially corrupt that database if I just pull the plug or hold down the power button. So we don't really want to do that. You see how it's gone back to a blue light now, and then it should go to a white light, and we should hear those lovely three beeps. The three beeps of success. Music to my ears. Right, and I can see on the screen now, I'll show you in a second, that I do get a display. It hasn't got any HDMI issues or anything along those lines. I'll be back to confirm with you in a second before this overheats. All right, and there we have it. So we have the PlayStation 5 here. Uh, I played about with it on the previous person's profile, and it seems to be absolutely A-OK. -okay. I've just gone for the reset. I've done an update, all of that good stuff, and it's ready to sell. With that being said, let's head on over to Sally Spectacular Spreadsheet. A little bit of a short one today because I'm literally out of stock. I'm still scouring to see if I can find some deals, and maybe I might start venturing out a little bit further to different devices for this series. I have no idea, but we're so close now. Let's confirm our profit for today. Now, I don't think our profits are going to be that great. Um, I'm going to put the digital is going to sell for £200 because they have just not been selling recently. So I'm going to say 200 With that in mind, we're looking at a nice profit of £49.21 pence for today's episode. And that today was probably about half an hour. In which case, the scores on the doors, the total profit's not going to move. But as you can see from this page, I've still got one, two, three, four items to sell and then i'll be able to update the actual total profit a massive thank you for watching today's episode i appreciate you and your face put a comment down below as to when you think this series is going to end or am i going to have a bad streak of seven episodes who knows as always i'll see you in the next one peace